Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be setting some things on fire, so let's jump right in. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to go into GIMP so that we can create some textures that will be used for our fire particles. Uh, I use GIMP because it's free and I um, can't afford Photoshop. Uh, I think Photoshop's probably a little bit more full featured. I'm sure there's plenty of people that would be willing to argue back and forth. Um, this is what I use because it's what I can afford and it does everything I need it to do. Um, feel free to check it out. It's free. It's open source. Um, but what we're going to do is let's create a new image. We're going to do 120 by 120 and let's go in here and we're going to fill with the foreground color which is black so that we have a nice black background. I'm doing that because um, when you do textures for the particles and you're going to do added to blending, the black stuff um, is what ends up turning into um, the transparent areas. So let's add a new layer. I apologize if this stuff is kind of hanging off the screen a little bit. Um, let's go with transparency. Okay, and so the way layers work in GIMP is whatever's selected over here is the layer that you're currently drawing on. So let's, uh, we've got the new layer selected. Let's come in here and I'm gonna pick uh, kind of an orangish fire color. It doesn't really matter too much. You'll see why in a second. Let me go ahead and fill that in. And then we're gonna go to filters, render, clouds, difference clouds. And this is gonna give us some, um, some cool effects here that we can use to make something that looks kind of like fire. Um, so I'm just gonna check this out a little bit, maybe tweak some settings to get something that looks fairly good. Um, I don't know, maybe something like that. So we'll click okay. You'll notice that it's um, fairly strange looking. What we're gonna do is go to colors and go to colorize and then we'll start adjusting the levels here till we get it looking more like some flames or something. A bit of an orange color. Let's go all the way over. And let's leave it like that for now. Maybe we'll adjust the darkness down a little bit. Okay, let's just let's see how that turns out. I know it looks kind of strange, but I think it'll probably turn out okay in the end. Now, because I want to fade to the black around the edges, what I'm going to do is to the new layer, I'm going to apply um, a layer mask. So let's add layer mask. We want to do white for full opacity first. Let me move this over a little bit. That will help us stay on the screen. Okay, so a layer mask basically tells um, GIMP, what parts of the image you want to have be seen and what parts you want to go into transparent areas. White means that it's completely um, visible and then when it fades into black then that means that it becomes transparent. So let's um, show the layer mask here for a second. Let's go to the gradient. Let's switch back to black for our foreground color. And we're going to do make sure we do radial on the gradient so it goes out in a circle. And then let's Drag and drop here to almost the bottom. Okay, you'll notice that I'm a bit off in the middle there, so let's try this again. I wanna make sure that I have black all the way around the edge, otherwise we're gonna see kind of a straight line um, um, right where the edge of that the um, texture is. Okay, so that looks like it might be pretty good to start off with. Let's turn that off. Okay, so you can see that that the fire kind of fades out into the black. Now it's kind of a straight fade, so let's go back and show the layer mask again. I'm gonna switch to my tablet here because it's a little bit easier. I've got a Wacom tablet I'm borrowing from somebody. It allows me to just draw like I'm drawing with a pencil, so it it's really uh, works out pretty well. Let's go to the smudge. And maybe I'll turn the size down a little bit. Maybe just up a little bit. Okay. And let's uh, let's kind of smudge some of this. Let's bring some of it in from the edges. What we're trying to do here is not, we're trying to make it so it's not just such a straight, um, you know, line here. We're trying to blur the line up so it doesn't, look like a perfect circle. Let's pull some stuff into the middle. Pull it away. Let me 
need to break that up over there. And probably break it up over here as well. Okay, let's see what happens now when we turn off uh, showing the layer mask. Okay, so that's that's looking pretty good for right now. Let's see what it looks like if we import it. So I'm gonna go to file, let's do, you know what, actually first the image, what we're gonna do is image, we'll do merge visible layers. That takes it so that it's um, a flat image. Let's do save as, and I had already saved some stuff here before. So I've got the name already, so let's hit save. We're gonna replace it. And then we'll just go with the defaults. Let's go back over to Shiva. Let's import a texture. Let's import the fire that we just did. We're gonna keep everything the way it was. And let's go ahead and load up um, our particle generator. And we'll call this fire. And let's close the scene so we can get the particle uh, effect going here. We'll hit play. So it looks pretty blah with these squares. Let's turn on the fire. And you notice that uh, we still have squares, but if we turn on additive blending, now we get these little fire particles. Uh, let's turn the emitter. Uh, let's go with, for now, we'll do... Um, a disk and let's turn the particles up to about 512 let's turn the initial down I want it to be kind of a slow trickle of fire so I'm going to turn the initial value pretty far down I'm going to do pretty a little bit higher on the new per second um, let's take the initial speed down quite a bit um, and actually let's zoom in on our fire so we get a better look at it uh, maybe we'll turn down the random a little bit on the speed. So, you know, you know let's go a little bit higher on the random so things are kind of different. Um, now on the rotation, let's get these the um, texture actually rotating as it comes out. So we get some different looks. And then let's turn the gravity on. Uh, you know, let's turn it to a negative value so it goes up. Now I'm going to be turning this um, effect so that it, you know, it points upward, so it's going to look a little better than it is right now. And, you know, the colors don't really matter a whole lot, but it's fine. We'll leave them the way they are. The initial opacity, let's kind of taper off. This is, um, the initial is what comes out initially, obviously, and then key one and key two, these are different time frames, and so it's going to fade um, as it comes out. So let's see what we got so far. Okay, so far so good. The size, let's go really high on the initial so it looks more like a fire and then we'll come down as we come into some of the other keys. Um, in fact, we'll trail off pretty pretty far because we don't need flames going up into the sky so much. There we go. And we'll come down even further on that one. Okay. All right, so so far it looks like we've got a pretty a pretty decent fire. Let's save it. So save, and then let's come into our scene, and let's put some fire in there. So we're gonna create an object, and this will be let's let's just call it a helper since we don't right now we don't necessarily want there to be an object that's on fire. So fire helper, and yeah, let's drag it into the level, and let's go to our scene explorer. We'll go to fire helper. We'll go to attributes, special effects, add particle emitter. We're gonna do fire, and the fire was kind of coming out to the side, so I think we're gonna have to rotate it a little bit. But let's see what happens when we um, play the scene. Let's go into this mode you can see that it's fairly small and it seems to be like we said it's it's pointing in the wrong direction so let's pause and right click and go to edit current scene and then on this fire helper let's go to the attribute editor and let's change the rotation so I want to rotate it 
Uh, let's rotate it about the x-axis, which is running right to left across our screen, and let's rotate it. Let's see what happens if we do 90 degrees. Hopefully that will give us what we want. So let's save the scene. Yes, and we'll start it back up. Hit F9. So it's a little hard to tell, but I think it's going in more of a vertical direction. Now let's see what happens if we scale. So let's hit F9. Let's go to Edit Current Scene and let's go to the Fire Helper again. Attribute Editor. And I don't know if this is going to scale um, the particle effect or not, but let's see what happens. Let's scale five in each. We'll save the scene. Yes, we'll start it again. So it looks like it doesn't affect the uh, fire. So let's see what we need to do to change that. All right, so what I did, I paused it for a second. I went and took a look at a few things. But I basically went into uh, the global scale and scaled up the particle emitter. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it, but that's what I did. And I, I changed a few things. I, I slid some things around to make it a little bit better. I toned down the colors here and... Um, just kind of tweaked a few things and so this is what we get now so we get that fire that's burning and we launch the ball of course eventually we'll want it so that the ball when it hits the fire it uh, you know explodes or something like that and we'll make the fire bigger I just wanted to kind of get this into the game 